You're welcome. Today's lesson is going to be on module arithmetic or modular arithmetic. So basically, modular arithmetic is an arithmetic process whereby integers are divided by a fixed modulus and then the remainder we get after that division becomes our answer. So that implies that modular arithmetic only deals with what? The remainders that we derive when integers are divided by a fixed modulus. That mod, which is the modulus, is just our base. You understand? And we know that integers can be positive or negative whole numbers. And it is also important that I point out that in modal arithmetic, we can have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of numbers. Okay? Then, modal arithmetic is also related to events that go on and on, like in a cycle. So, for example, the days of the week, the months in a year, and so on and so forth. So, all of these events are what? Related to modal arithmetic. And that's the reason modal arithmetic is also called clock arithmetic. So, today we are going to be dealing with addition and subtraction in modal arithmetic. So, let's look at the questions we have. So, I have um, 4 plus 7 in mod 4. 4 plus 7 mod 4. 12 plus 6 mod 3. 12 minus 5 mod 5. 6 minus 9 mod 2. 15 in mod 6. Minus 25 in mod 12. Now, in order to solve all this, I'm going to perform the basic operation, mathematical operation, then I'm going to take my number to this base, that is what? The mod. And let me point out here that in mod 2, there are two numbers, which are always what? 0 and 1. In mod 3, we can only have three numbers, which are what? 0, 1, and 2. In mod 4, there are four numbers, which are 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on and so forth. So that implies that any answer I'm going to get when performing this addition and subtraction must not be equal to the mod. I'll give you an instance. 4 plus 7 in mod 4. That implies that my answer can either be 0, 1, 2, or 3. My answer can, nev can never be 4, not to talk of having a number what more than 4, greater than 4. Do you understand? So let's take it one by one. There are a number of methods that we can use to solve this. So I'm going to be using three methods to solve the question and I may need to alternate them depending on how I wish. So let's listen. Number one, I have um, 4 plus 7 mod 4. 4 plus 7 mod 4. Now if I add 4 to 7, I'm going to get 11. If I add 4 to 7, I will get 11. But I have to take the answer to my what? To my modulus. So that implies I'm going to have what? 11 then divided by my modulus which is what 4 so 4 into 11 how many groups of 4 can I find in 11 that is simply what 2 so I'm going to have um, 2 2 times 4 is 8 that implies that I have the remainder of what 3 my remainder is simply 3 and that remainder automatically becomes my answer so just like our definition modular arithmetic is an arithmetic process that deals with what the remainder that we derive after integers are divided by a fixed modulus. So I'm going to have my answer as what? 3 in mod 4. 3 in what? In mod 4. Now apart from this method, there is another method I can use. It's a clock method because I said in the definition that modular arithmetic relates to events that go on and on. So let's say I have a clock, okay? In mod 4, there are four numbers, which are what? 0, 1, 2, and 3. So I'm going to use those numbers, what, to get the modulus. This is what I have. 0, 1, 2, and 3. So I actually have four numbers there, which are what? 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now, I want to perform my addition. 4 plus 7 is what? 11. So I'll just come to this clock, then I'll count 11 in a clockwise direction. In a what? Clockwise direction. So let me count 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So under 11, I have what? 3. In what? In this clock, which is a mod 4. So that implies that my answer is what? 3 mod 4. So this is the second method. You can make it of this clock, okay? Then the third method 
You can make use of a number line system. You can make use of what? A number line system. Now, let me draw my normal number line. This is my number line. Let's say this is my origin zero. Numbers to the right are positive. Numbers to the left are what? Negative. So let's have this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and so on and so forth. And I know that on this side I'm going to have a minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, and so on and so forth. Okay? Now, for my modulus, I have mod four, which implies that I have what? Four numbers, zero, one, two, and three. This is my normal number line. So I will now come here to make this number line to be in what? Mod four. How can I do that? All I'm going to do is have um, zero, one, two, and three. Zero, one, two, and three. 0, 1, 2, and 3, and so on and so forth, okay? So I'm going to start from my 0. Okay, I'm supposed to start from 0. So I have um, 0, 1, 2, and 3. 0, 1, 2, and 3. 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. So at this time, I'm going to have um, 3, 2, 1, 0, and so on and so forth. This is my normal number line. Running from, let's say, minus 4, to 11 and then this is what what I have in this for the equivalent in what mod so 4 plus 7 is 11 let me go to my number line and locate 11 this is where I have 11 okay that's where I have 11 but this is a mod 4 so let me look at what I have on it on, on for 11 I have what 3 that implies that if 11 is converted to mod 4 I'm going to have what 3 so simply 4 plus 7 is 11 this is 11 then in 11 mod 4 we have what 3 so that implies that 4 plus 7 in mod 4 is equal to 3 so we can actually make use of those th this, these three methods to solve questions that has to do with what addition subtraction multiplication and even division in module arithmetic so that's number one let me move on to the next number for number two i have um, 12 plus 6 mod 3. 12 plus 6 mod 3. Now, my 12 plus 6 is going to give me 18. 12 plus 6 is what? 18. Then I'm going to divide that by what? My mod. So as to get the remainder, okay? So I have um, 18 divided by 3. 3 into 18 is going to give me 6 remainder 0. So that 0, which is my remainder, becomes my answer. So I'm going to have um, 0 mod 6. So it's as simple as that. So, for number 3, I have um, 12 minus 5 mod 5. 12 minus 5 mod 5, okay? So the same thing is going to happen. 12 minus 5 is going to give me 7. So I have um, 7 divided by what? My modulus, which is 5. 5 into 7 is going to give me 1 remainder 2. So that remainder automatically becomes my answer. So I'm going to have what? 2 in mod 5. So it's as simple as that. So let me move on to number 4. I have um, 6 minus 9 mod 2. 6 minus 9 mod 2, okay? 6 minus 9 mod 2. Two. So, 6 minus 9 is going to give me minus 3. 6 minus 9 is going to give me what? Minus 3, then in mod 2. But don't forget that I said in mod 2, there are two numbers, which are what? 0 and 1. So what am I going to do? Very simple. This is minus 3. It is not a number in this modulus. So what I'm going to do is add my modulus to it until I'm able to get a number in this modulus. So let's add this. I'm going to have minus 3 plus my modulus, which is 2. So for this, I will have minus 1. Minus 1 is not a number in this modulus. So I'm still going to do the same thing. Add my 2 again, plus 2. So minus 1 plus 2 is going to give me what? 1. So in mod 2. Since my 1 is a number in what? In mod 2. 
one automatically becomes the answer, okay? And how about using a normal line system to solve a question like this? It's very simple, okay? Or clock, let me see the clock. The normal line will take our time, okay? It's better to go for the clock method or this simple one. Now we have, um, let me use this for subtraction. This my clock is a mod 5, and in mod 5 I have 5 numbers, okay? 0 to 4, that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, and what? And 4. Now, I have um, 12 minus 5. Don't forget that when I solved this earlier, 12 minus 5 is 7. Then I said 5 into 7, so I got 1 remainder 2, and the 2 became my answer, okay? Which implies that my answer should be what? 2 in mod 5. Okay, so let me count 12. Let me count 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is my 12. If I go in the clockwise direction, is that okay? For 12. Now, I want to subtract 5. I'm going to go in an anti clockwise direction to subtract what? 5. So I'm going to count 5 now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have 2. Five. I'm going to take this once again. 12 minus 5 mod 5. Okay? The first thing I need to do, this is a clock in mod 5. This is a clock in mod 5. So all I have to do is count 12. How do I count my 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Is that okay? Now, minus 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You go for in a clockwise direction to count your whole number. When you want to subtract, you go in an anti-clockwise direction. Very simple, okay? Let's move on. For this, I have um, 15 in mod 6. Obviously, 15 is not a number in mod 6, so all I'm going to do is convert it to what? A number in mod 6. So that means I'm going to have 15 divided by 6. So how many groups of 16 will I have? How many groups of 6 will I have in 15? That's just 2. So that's 2 and I want 3. So this remainder becomes my answer. So that means I'm going to have um, 3 in mod 6. 3 in mod what? In mod 6. So that is it. So finally, I have a minus 25 in mod 12. Minus 25 in mod 12. How can I solve this? Okay. That would be minus 25. Don't forget that I said minus 25 is not a number in this base. So I'm going to add my base to it. The, mod the what? The modulus. So I'm going to add plus 12. If I have this, minus 25 plus 12 is still going to give me minus 18. So I'm yet to get a number in this base. So I'm going to add 12 again. Plus 12. So minus 13 plus 12 is going to give me what? Minus 1. I still don't have, I still do not have what? A number in this base. So what am I going to do? I'll add 12 again. Plus 12. So minus 1 plus 12 is going to give me what? 11. So that implies that this is going to give me 11 in mod 12. So what to do is simple. When you have a negative number, and you want to take it to your modulus, you continue to add the modulus until you have a number in that word modulus. So this is how to solve questions that has to do with this. So you're welcome. Thank you for watching. And do not forget to subscribe. You're welcome.